In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect ChatGPT with over 5,000 apps. You will be able to connect ChatGPT to basically any app that you can think of, set up flows that are going to do the work for you automatically. One of the examples could be that you want to schedule a post on LinkedIn every single day, or maybe you get an email into your Gmail and then you want to use ChatGPT to automatically reply to it. If you are interested in tech and AI, definitely subscribe down below because I post every single week. All right, let's get started. The first thing is that you have to go on openai.com and you are going to log in. If you don't have an account, you just create an account. But I'm assuming that if you use ChatGPT, you already have an account. Here from these three options, we are going to choose API, integrate OpenAI models into your application or business. We actually don't need anything here. You can browse around and see some examples. Then you also have a playground where you can actually try different models here. You have some documentation in this tab here, but the only thing you have to go is to click on your profile and then you want to click on manage account. Your account is probably on a free trial, which was the case for everyone who signed up when uh, ChatGPT started. What they were doing is that they were giving away some free credits for everyone to use. For example, I was given $18 which you can see that they got expired because I didn't use them. And here is actually where you can change the free trial on ChatGPT to a paid account. Here you can click on set up a paid account and here you get the pop-up where you can choose whether you are an individual or you are working on behalf of a company. If you click on the company, you can fill out the information here but I'm going to go with individual. Here you can see how it's going to work. So they don't offer a subscription that you pay monthly fees. Basically, if you want to connect ChatGPT with other apps through API, you, you are going to be charged for what you use. In other words, it's also called pay as you go. A temporary authorization hold will be placed on your card for $5. At the end of each calendar month, you will be charged for all usage that happened during that month. So simply you are going to be using ChatGPT in other apps throughout the month. And then at the end of each month, you are going to be charged for how much you have used in the last month. All right, and if we click on this one, learn more about pricing, you are going to be redirected to a page which explains how much you are going to be charged. So it really depends on the model that you are using. The more advanced model you are using, the more you are going to be charged per token. You can see that they are charging per 1000 tokens. And if you basically don't know what the tokens are, it's super simple. Um, the explanation is over here. Multiple models, each with different capabilities and price points. Prices are per 1000 tokens. You can think of tokens as pieces of words, where 1000 tokens is about 750 words. This paragraph is 35 tokens. So if you generate a message long like this, let's say that this would be a tweet post, you would be charged for the price of 35 tokens. But for example, if we are going to use a uh, chat GPT 3.5, you can see you are going to be charged 0.002 per 1000 tokens. So this one message would not even cost you this amount because it would only cost you 0.00007 dollars. So you can see that it's not that expensive. But if you're using ChatGPT in multiple apps, it could add up. I'm right now going to go and fill out my information here and then hit set up payment method. All right, and just like that, your subscription was created successfully. I also got an email. So in the email, we got the confirmation that you have successfully set up a paid plan for the OpenAI API. You can see right now that this has changed. And right now I don't have the expired credits that I was given on my free trial but this is right now fully set up for me to use. All right, and the next step that we have to do is that we have to generate something called API key. You can click on this one, API keys. You can see I have one generated already and you must generate a new API key in order to revoke your only remaining key. You can read more about it over here, but it's very simple. You just simply click on create new secret key. You then get this pop-up you can name your key if you want to. I'm going to name it ChatGPT. And when I click on the create secret key, I will be given a code that I'm going to immediately delete right after this video. So don't try to use this code. It's not going to work. Also, this is a good reminder for you that you don't want API key to be shown to anyone because then what they can do is that they can take your API key and then that is going to allow them to use ChatGPT on your account 
so you are going to be charged. All right, I'm going to create secret key. And just like that, I got the key created right now. I'm going to copy it. And you can see that the key is named here. Now remember that you cannot edit the code or see it once again because of the security. You can see that it has never been used before, but I'm going to go and revoke this one. You can see that this API key will be immediately disabled. I can revoke this one. And right now we have uh, the key already on our clipboard. So we just have to paste it in our Zapier account. The last step you have to do is that you want to go to your Zapier account and then you go to my apps. And here you can see I already have some apps connected, but here we want to connect two things. OpenAI and ChatGPT. So we want to go and add the connection. And the first one is going to be ChatGPT. We click on it. We get this new window over here. And here's where you actually have to paste your API key. I'm going to paste mine and set continue. And just like that, we connected ChatGPT with Zapier. And right now we can use it with over 5,000 other apps. You can go into these three dots and test the connection. And the test has been successful. The second thing you want to do is that you want to connect OpenAI. Now, what is the difference between ChatGPT and OpenAI? OpenAI also allows you to try other models. But mostly there are three things you can do with OpenAI that you can't do with the other app ChatGPT. But mostly you can use OpenAI for three main features, translations of the text, transcript of videos or audio files. And thirdly, you can generate images. Here you simply put the same API key once again. And just like that, you are connected. We are going to go and test the connection as successful. Right now we are good to go. You can just simply click on create Zap. And here you can start creating. So for example, let's say that we would want to post on Twitter every single day and the tweet is going to be generated by ChatGPT. So here the trigger can be every single day. So we are going to go schedule by Zapier. Here the event is going to be every day. You can see a small description here. This is what starts the Zap. We are going to continue and then you set up more settings in your trigger. So here you can say trigger on weekends. We are going to say yes time of the day, we are going to say 11 a.m. That sounds great. And then you hit continue. You are going to test the trigger with this button. You see the results over here and then you can continue. And then the second action is going to be that we are going to go and use ChatGPT because obviously we want to generate the tweet through ChatGPT. We can click on ChatGPT and here you can see that we have one option. Now here you might ask, why don't we use OpenAI? I would recommend you if you want to use a uh, ChatGPT 3.5 or 4 to use ChatGPT app. And then if you want to create images, transcripts or translations, use the OpenAI app. We have connected both of them. So you are not going to encounter any problems here. We are going to go and click on conversation. It's giving you the description, sends a chat to OpenAI and generate a completion, storing the message as you go. That's exactly what we need to do for posting every single day. We are going to hit continue. We have our account connected. We can just click continue here. And here is where you actually set up the prompt. So here you have the user message. Here I'm going to just simply write my prompt. But remember, there are so many options here you can do. You can also use variables here. So let's say that you want to post every single day. And let's say that you would want to include the um, day inside the prompt. That's where you actually get to the higher level where you are also able to use the uh, variables here that you have set up previously. You then have username and assistant name. I would recommend you to leave this um, as it is, but you can also rename the assistant and try to experiment with this. Here, the assistant instructions, uh, it says you are a helpful assistant. You can leave this as it is. This is very general once again, but let's say that you are a helpful social media assistant. Now here, the point is that you are going to get a better and more precise results if you are telling ChatGPT what its role is. Now you can choose uh, the model here. You can see we have the uh, model 3.5 available to us. Then we have also a second one, which is basically the same one, but you can see this number here. Now this number is basically just a date, the 1st of March. Here I would recommend you not to use this one because it's basically going to get expired. So always use just the uh, 3.5 Turbo. If you want to get the ChatGPT4, um, you can just go here and join the OpenAI waitlist for access or in the future, it's going to be available as well. You then have a temperature here and top P. Basically, I would recommend you to leave it as it is with one, 
you can read more about what each of these do. It's basically redefining the results for you in different ways so you can experiment with this as well. And here is a memory key. Now this is a very, very good feature. And basically what this is, is that when you go to ChatGPT, you can see here that we have unique conversations. Whenever you are inside conversation, ChatGPT actually remembers what it has written before. So think about this the same way as conversation. And here you can type anything here. It does not matter. Let's say that this would be post conversation. Now, if you set up a memory key, ChatGPT is going to remember all the previous posts. So for example, in your prompt, you can also right now add, please don't repeat the same tweet. This is a very, very good feature because you don't want to uh, create the same post every single day. All right, and then we can just click on continue. You can see that we can right now test the action. So let's actually do it, test the action. You can see that the test has been successful. We have the content. You can be very creative with the prompt so you can adjust the length. For example, if you wanna post it on Twitter, you know that you have only a certain amount of characters. And so this is just an example, All right? And right now we have ChatGPT set up. It's generating a useful tip how to use ChatGPT every single day. We can go on Twitter here then we can go and create a tweet. We are going to hit continue. I already have my account uh, connected here. We are going to continue. So here, the first thing is what your message is. Here, what you can do is actually, you can refer back to the things that you have done in your flow. So this is where it actually is so valuable because right now we know that we have had a conversation with ChatGPT and it is generating our useful tip for us every single day. So we click on conversation in ChatGPT and then you see assistant response message. So this is the actual response that we got from ChatGPT. We can click on this one and then you can also add images or videos or GIFs. So here you could use OpenAI to generate an image and then you would insert it in the same way as with ChatGPT. Now remember, you would just go into plus and you would need to create this action before. So you would go to plus and click on OpenAI and then you would generate the image with OpenAI. But we are going to leave it like it is. Then should shorten URLs. You can always keep this as yes, because for example, for Twitter, you always want to save space. Then you click on continue. And here you can see how the message is going to look like. This is obviously a longer post. So you would want to redefine this in your prompt. So for example, remember to always generate a tweet that is maximum of 150 characters. And then you can test this action. You can see we got a green tick. You can see obviously it got cut off because the tweet is too long but uh, this is where you can actually redefine it in your prompt. You can also say include hashtags or as well as uh, emojis. And then you can simply give this app a name. So it would be Twitter post and you would hit publish. And then every single day, it's going to start uh, a conversation with ChatGPT based on the prompts that we chose. And then it's also going to create a tweet with that specific answer from ChatGPT every single day. All right, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new, please give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe down below if you're interested in more videos about ChatGPT, AI and Zapier. I post every single week. Thank you so much and have a great day.